Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Terigno, and this is the Unit 13 review for Geometry A. This was the chapter on circles, um, and this is your test review for your test tomorrow. So in number one, given a circle with a radius 12 millimeters, find the chord length of a 120 degree arc. These problems were the ones, and you could probably get away at this point without drawing a picture, but just so you have an idea. These were the ones where we had the circle, and we had the radius of 12, and the radius of 12, and then a 120 degree angle in the middle. And what I want to find is the length of this segment right here. So remember, that's not a right triangle, so I would end up using law of cosines. And so law of cosines would be set up like this. Um, let me fix my pen real quick. A squared equals, now the two sides of my triangle are 12 and 12, so I would say 12 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 12 times 12 times cosine of 120. And some of you are starting to see this pattern that this same question, which pops up over and over again, um, is always set up exactly the same way. You always have your, um, your radius is your a and your b, so that's what goes here and here in your formula, and then that angle goes down here with the cosine, and then you just have to remember after you solve to take the square root, because that's equal to a squared. So when I type this into a calculator, I end up with, end up with a squared equals 432, and then just remember, after you get that value, because that's equal to a squared, I have to take a square root of that. So square root of 432 comes out to be 20.8. And that would be your answer for number one. So number two is going to work exactly the same way, except now our radius is 7 and the arc is 78 degrees. So I would say a squared equals 7 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 7 times 7 times cosine of 78. So it's law of cosines every time, but really your setup ends up being about the same. And when I do that, I end up with 77.6. And remember, that's equal to a squared. and then take a square root. I end up with about 8.8, .8, and that would be in millimeters. Guess I should put my units on here. Okay. All right, let's look at number three. Um, in number three, it gives me that arc AB, so that would be from A to B on the outside of the circle, is 122 and arc BC is 128 and I'm looking for this angle here okay, I'm looking for that angle well that angle I could find if I knew what this arc was and I can get that arc because I know that the whole circle is 360, and I have 122 and 128, which combine to make, oh, 150. I'm sorry, 250. So that means I'm going to do 360 minus 128 and minus 122, and I end up with 110 when I do that. So that means the measure of this arc is 110. And then this is an inscribed angle. Remember, an inscribed angle is when it goes all the way back to the opposite edge of the circle. It doesn't stop in the middle. And inscribed angles are always half of their intercepted arc. So I would take 110, divide by 2, and I end up with 55 degrees. And that would be the measure of the angle. So 55 degrees. Okay. Let's keep going. So 
So in number four, arc YZ is 101. So this here is 101. And I am looking for angle YXC, which is this angle here. And notice that that is the inscribed angle that goes with that arc that I have. Okay, that that angle is inscribed in the blue arc there. And again, an inscribed angle is just half of the arc that it intercepts. So I'm just going to take 101, divide it by 2, and I end up with 50.5 degrees. Okay. Looks good. Let's keep going. All right, we did one similar to this in our warm-up today. Today we talked about, let's see, we know that angle ABE is 65, so this is 65. Now, then we said that if these are both radii, if we have two radii of the circle here and here, that really what I'm looking at here is an isosceles triangle because I have two sides that are equal. And if it's an isosceles triangle, I know that the two angles are equal. So if this is 65, then this is 65. And that arc that I'm looking for, BD, that's this. Whoops, meant to do that in a thicker pen. Let me try that again. That's this arc here. That's inscribed in that 65 degree angle. So this is kind of going backwards from what we were doing in the previous problems. Up here, we had the arc, and we had to go back to get the angle, so we cut it in half. Here, this has already been cut in half, so to move it out to the arc, I would just double it. Okay, So if this is 65, this is going to be 65 times 2, which is 130 degrees. Okay, let's move on to page two. Okay, let's see if I can blow this up a little bit. Oh. Okay, I was able to make it a little bigger there so we could see what we were looking at. So it gives us that the measure of DPC is 145. So that's this angle here. Sometimes what I start doing when I get information like that is I just start filling in other stuff that I would know even if I'm not quite sure yet how it's going to help me, um, sometimes it's helpful to have a lot of information. So when I look at this, I see that this here is a central angle, which means the arc that's inscribed in it is going to match. So that would tell me that if that's 145, that, oops, I do have that, that this arc would be 145. Okay, and central angles are really easy. As soon as you see a central angle, it's really easy to get out to that arc because they just match. And so now I'm looking for the measure of angle DBC, which is this, DBC. And that's an inscribed angle because the vertex is over here on the circle. Well, it's inscribed in that 145 degree arc. See, I knew I was going to need that somewhere. Um, and remember, when you have an inscribed angle, all you have to do is cut in half. So I'm going to take 145 divide it by 2, and I get 72.5 degrees. Okay, so over here, this should be 72.5 for question A. Okay, let's go back to B. The measure of arc DE. Okay, arc DE, let's see if I can... Hmm. I guess I'm just going to have to write over what I have. Arc DE is this right here. Okay. Which the central angle for that is here. And notice that's, that's half of my original 145. And remember we talked about knowing that it's half because it's a perpendicular bisector of that chord. That's what this right here tells you. The fact that that's perpendicular tells you that this angle, the central angle, is being cut in half. So half of 145, again, is 72.5. And so that means this little angle here is 72.5, which means that this would be 72.5.
So for my answer for part B, I would just also say 72.5. And again, that's because um, it's half of that central angle. And with a lot of these, there's probably other ways that you came up with to do them. As long as you got the same answer, you're totally fine. There are more than one way to do a lot of these problems. Okay, let's shrink back down. Move on to number seven. Okay, these questions are similar to those first ones that we started with. The chord length of a 150 degree arc, again, that is law of cosines. So I would say A squared equals 12 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 12 times 12 times the cosine of the central angle, which is 150 degrees. Okay, let's type that in. I end up with A squared equals 537.4 Oops. Try that again. A squared equals 537.4 and then I have to take a square root and I end up with 23.2 which is option C. 23.2 Okay. Now number eight is going to work the same way, and really the only thing that's going to change from number seven is the angle, because our radius is still 12, but our angle is now 120. So I would set this up as a squared equals 12 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 12 times 12 times cosine of 120. And I'm just going to go in my calculator and change that 150 degree angle from the last one to 120. And I get A squared equals 432. Take a square root and I end up with 20.8. Now the options that it gives you here, though, these are exact values. And we could, if I drew this picture out, I could show you why this is related to, um, like, special right triangles, like 30, 60, 90 triangles. And that's where these values are coming from. However, um, as far as this goes, remember, your test tomorrow isn't going to be multiple choice. And really, my concern is that you can do this, that you can get that answer. So let's just figure out which one of these four would equal 20.8. And I can do that by typing that into my calculator. So in my calculator calculator, I would type in 6 times the square root of 2. For this one, I get like 8.5. If I do 12 square root of 3, I get 20.8, which was my answer. So 20.8, my option here would be B. Okay. And... Okay, number nine. Sorry, I read that one wrong at first. Thought it was the same as the last one. But measure of an angle inscribed, and I, I crossed it out there kind of accidentally. I didn't really mean to, but inscribed is really your key word here. This is an inscribed angle. So if I were to draw this picture, I would have an angle that goes all the way from one side of the circle to the other. And... The angle is 52 degrees, and what I'm looking for is the measure of the arc that would go with it, so I want to know this. Okay, well, remember we said inscribed angles are half of their intercepted arc, so really I just need to take 52 and double it, and 52 doubled would be 104. Okay, so your option here is A. Okay, let's go on to number 10. Number 10 gives me that NO and NQ are tangents, all right? And um, as soon as I see tangents, remember the big thing we learned about tangents is the right angle. So I'm going to go ahead and label those. Wherever the radius meets the tangent, that's a right angle, okay? 
So it gives me that ON is 4, and QP is 3, and it wants to know the area of triangle OPN. So triangle OPN is this one here. Okay, well, if this here, if PQ or QP is 3, then PO is also 3. Many of you are going to make that assumption, but make sure you know why. Um, the reason that that's true is they're both a radius of the circle. They're two radii, so they're going to match. And if this is a triangle, area of a triangle is 1 half base times height, and the base and the height are the two that make the right angle. So that would be 1 half, 3 times 4, which equals 6. And does it give me units? Nope, no units. So I would just say 6 square units for 10A. Okay, 10B, I really hope. Oh, good. Get rid of that stuff. 10B says if angle ONQ, so this angle here, is 74 degrees. I want to find arc OR. So I'm looking for this arc here. Okay, here's how I would approach this. If this is 74 degrees, I know that that's being cut in half because we've proved over and over again that in this situation these two triangles are congruent. So if that's 74 degrees, I know that half of that is going to be uh, 37, I believe. Let me just double check that. Yep, so I know that angle ONP, just this angle here, would be 37 degrees. Oh, let's see if I can get rid of this, too. Nope. Okay, so that's 37. I know this up here was 90, and then I can get this angle here by subtracting from 180. So I'm going to do 180 minus the 90. It's formed up at that corner, and then minus the 37. And again, I got the 37 from cutting the 74 in half, and I just want that little piece there. Okay, that's going to give me uh, 53 degrees. And so if I know this angle is 53, that's...